may have tasted what she had to offer this morning. So some of you have heard this word kombucha lately, and I know many of you, like me, were like, well, what's kombucha? And she started explaining it over the last few weeks on the one-on-one levels with many of us. Kombucha is a craft soda, and she's going to explain to you a little bit more about that. She is a local entrepreneur that brews her own creature craft sodas, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about her story and where this came from and what it entails. So there's a lot of really cool uh, story attributes to what this is. So she's going to give you six minutes of captive presentation about creature craft So Are you ready, Kim? She's all right. Come on. Let's welcome Kim this morning. Come on, Kim. Hello? 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 <laughs> Alright, so, hello. I've been coming to these ever since they started. I really appreciate the business community. Uh, we're a little unique because we aren't even selling yet. We're very, very brand new. Uh, a little bit of background about me. When I was in high school, I had this dream. and. I wrote an essay to gain a scholarship. And in the essay I said, oh my gosh, I want to work for Universal Studios. And I want to like build sets and do amazing things at Universal Studios. And I got the scholarship. And I was out here visiting my sister. I met my lovely husband, Josh. And I was like, just so you know, I'm moving to Orlando because I'm going to work at Universal Studios. <laughs> and he was like, okay. And we went. And I got a job at Universal Studios. And I worked there part time while I went to school at the University of Central Florida. I got a degree in digital media and eventually worked my way into a full time role in IT, working with attraction ticketing and entrance at Universal Studios. Thank you very much. I've accomplished my dream. 11 years at Universal Studios, and we were starting a family, got married, and we were like, wow, this lifestyle is kind of crazy for a family. And we found our way back home. And we're here and working in corporate business. We always, I always had this like idea of like, I have all these ideas, we should do this. And I'd come to, you know, business meetings with presentations and proposals as to new things we could do. And they'd be like, okay, give us cool. Um, we'll just take this under advisement. So I'd be like, man, I need my own business. <laughs> so two or three business plans later, uh, I went through a bunch of different things and eventually, like we were brewing our own kombucha at home because it's actually kind of expensive when you're buying it uh, all the time because it's a little bit addicting and it's like, three to four dollars per bottle and so we we're like <clears throat> our other business plans we were like wow these we can't afford these we can't do that but kombucha we could do that so we decided to create creature craft soda so we're handcrafted small batch kombucha and water keeper and also sodas so i'll tell you what that actually means is that There we go. So I get this asked this a lot of what is kombucha? So it's essentially a really young vinegar. So vinegar, if you don't know how that's made, you take a sugary liquid, you add in yeast fermented into alcohol, then you leave it open to the air, add in a starter culture, and it eventually turns the bacteria eats all the alcohol and it turns into vinegar. So kombucha is a really young vinegar, which means you don't let it ferment into alcohol. You use less sugar and you start right away with a starter culture, which is called a SCOBY. It stands for a symbiotic colony of yeast and bacteria, or bacteria and yeast. Um, so these are called the mother, which the bacteria creates like a cellulose membrane. People refer to it as a mushroom. It's not really a mushroom. Um, because a cellulose is created by bacteria, whereas uh, yeast is technically a fungus. Anyway, we could go into that rabbit hole, but I'm not going to. What's really great about kombucha is it's full of really helpful organic acids. It has acetic acid, it has gluconic acid, some varieties have hyaluronic acid, and it's touted as a probiotic, which 
Not actually true. Commercial kombuchas have to add probiotics back in after it's manufactured so that they can say it's probiotic. Whereas that's really not kombucha. Kombucha is acid and it's like good acids. It helps your liver function. It helps like things just flow, you know? They say apple cider vinegar drinks are really good for you. Same sort of thing, except this tastes better. Yeah. <laughs> Way better. So uh, water keeper is a completely different type of culture. Look at these really beautiful little crystals. That's a water keeper culture. It houses different types of bacteria and yeasts. So we, and then this is it like fermenting in some liquid and it just like use a sugar water solution to feed it, juices to feed it and you just let it, let it eat away at sugar water and it's more, it's less sour, it's actually more probiotic. And so I refer to it kind of like a, a flavored seltzer. So fermentation is, can scare a lot of people, right? Like this word is scary, oh no, fermentation. Um, people get freaked out by it. Whereas like a lot of things that we eat and drink in our entire culture is fermented and Soy sauce, vinegars, beer, wine, cheese, any sort of yogurt, it's all fermented technically, but the terminology is scary. So um, here is some really interesting statistics about the kombucha beverage industry that you might not know about. So the global kombucha market is expected to reach $10.45 billion by 2027. Um, and just in 2019, it was at like 0.97 billion. So the main reason for this huge growth is that right now only about 20% of consumers even know what it is. So education is going to be a big part of what we do. And it's actually a really awesome gateway fermentation if people want to do it at home because it's really easy to do at home and it's actually very safe. Another interesting statistic is of the overall beverage sector in the United States, 76.4% of that is the functional beverage market. So that includes energy drinks, uh, sports drinks, kombuchas, water keepers, and it's actually seeing a really good growth rate. Like people want really tasty drinks that are non-alcoholic, that are good for you, that aren't just like full of salt sports drinks. So those are just some really interesting statistics that I thought I'd share with you guys. Um, oh, wrong way. So fermentation, it's really not scary. Uh, I've grown to love it. I, for people who get grossed out by it, I like think of it as cultured. You add starter culture into it and you let it culture amongst itself, and then you end up with more starter culture and more really good stuff to drink, kind of like sourdough bread. Sourdough bread is fermented, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> so when you really start to explore and have fun, you start to discover new things, and it's a little bit weird, like, I don't want to be presumptuous here, but I actually invented an entirely brand new way to ferment kombucha through playing and discovery at home. So using a silicone container, the SCOBY, the cellulose membrane, actually grows around the entire surface of the liquid, it makes a balloon filled with kombucha. Whereas if you use a stainless steel container, a glass container just grows on the top because it needs oxygen and the bacteria is like, hey, there's some oxygen, let's like protect our environment from oxygen. Whereas silicone is an oxygen, oxygen permeable membrane. So bacteria is like, hey, here's oxygen, here's oxygen, here's oxygen. Let's uh, protect our environment from oxygen, which is actually really neat because even a lot of professionals will say the bacteria creates the SCOBY and it just floats to the top. It's not true. 
The bacteria is smart enough to know exactly where it needs to put the SCOBY and it puts it there and keeps it there, which is proof here. So I'm working on scaling this up. When I have higher bacterial activity, which is what we're seeing when we have this cellulose around the entire thing, you actually create more gluconic acids, which means you end up with more nuanced flavors in the kombucha and less alcohol production out the gate. So I don't even really need to worry about it. So something like this I'm developing into larger scale batches. It's kind of interesting. I am a member of Kombucha Brewers International. And the president and a lot of kombucha brewers that I talk to never even, they don't even know about this. Like their kombucha labs, they didn't even think about putting it in silicone. And silicone is awesome because it's completely inert. It's acid resistant, it's chemical resistant, it's really easy to clean. Anyway, so fermentation is not scary for me. Renovations, they are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we got this really awesome, cute little building over on Broadway Street, 601 Broadway. I was like, this is great. It was just recently renovated. You know, they put new floors in, they put a new water heater, the roof is kind of nice, like new paint, uh, new AC, like what could go wrong, right? It's fine. Uh, yeah, so we're running into some issues and renovations. <laughs> one of the reasons why we're not open yet is like one step forward, five steps back. I put two steps back in the presentation, but you know, like I was like, oh, this flooring <coughs> has some bowing, you know? Like, okay, we'll just replace them, some boards, right? Now, whole thing had to go. Guess what we found when we took up the flooring? Got some termites. Oh, no. Got a treat for termites, yeah. So it's one thing after the other, you know? electrical issues, new plumbing we had installed. So we're working on renovations, but it's been tough, which is one of the reasons we're not selling yet. So just our overall goal is to create like really fresh, tasty drinks that are also pretty good for you. Um, you can create really awesome colors with natural products like this blue, Blue spirulina, completely natural, really good for you. Creates this amazing vibrant color. You don't need like blue 25 to make cool color. <laughs> this pink one, look at that, look at that beautiful color pink. I mean, it's prettier on a brighter screen, but. <laughs> pink dragon fruit. I don't need a combination of red 18 and yellow 55. Like, I'm making those up. I don't know if those are actual color codes, but you know what I mean. What's this one? Do, does anyone know what this plant is here? It's, a, it's called wood sorrel. It grows everywhere around here. I am working on a wood sorrel water keeper. It has a natural sour flavor to it, and you can brew it into a tea and make really awesome beverages out of it. And it's locally foraged, super fresh. <laughs> you can't get much fresher than that. <laughs> um, eventually, we'd also like to serve really interesting fermented snacks that are also pretty good for you. Um, but you've never had fermented tomatoes. So I make an awesome fermented tomato hot sauce. It's literally just tomatoes and you let it ferment and it, all this like lactic acid, lactic acid bacteria <laughs> like eats the sugars at the tomatoes and it just like preserves its freshness in tomatoes. Throw some like fermented habaneros in there. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Can you sell that? I will oh, eventually. I will <laughs> eventually, yes. Renovation first. <laughs> <laughs> this one here, remember those scobies? from the beginning, they actually make a vegan jerky out of it. It's actually really good. Um, this one here is a uh, honey and garlic. Raw honey, throw in some garlic, let it ferment. Six months later, it turns black. And it's like <coughs> in your mouth. So like flavor explosions everywhere, boom, boom, boom. We wanna do this, but we need a lot of help. We're not selling yet, so clearly we need help with construction. We're at the point now where stuff keeps happening and I've brought in some some people to do you know certain jobs and then 
jobs are not done very good and it takes more work for us to go back and fix things again and again. Um, so because we need like real construction help, we're gonna need like some funding options to, to finance this, which we were trying to avoid. And uh, next, uh, custom silicone fabrication, because man, the flavors coming out of a silicone fermenter is so good, like you can't beat it. Um, so I really want to develop that aspect of it. It could probably eventually become another business making silicone fermenters and selling them to the kombucha industry. Um, sourcing of glass beverage bottles this is actually really hard. I've been like asking all over the place and it's been rough finding consistent and even kombucha brewers that have been in business for a while say like the supply is just so wishy-washy there. So I'm looking for maybe some good options there. Um, and then beverage laboratory testing. So it's fermented, so that means the health department is like, no, and I have to have all this documentation, has to be tested by a laboratory, so I can prove that it's actually non-alcoholic and below 0.5% alcohol, which I have not been able to find a great laboratory in this area. There's even, I thought I'd find something in Springfield even, and there's a, a kombucha company in Springfield and they're like, we send our stuff to Colorado. <laughs> so there's gotta be something out there that can that we can figure out. If not, kinda wanna make something here so that other people who want to do this don't have this problem. So yeah, that's it. Um, awesome. we need All right, thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I just have a, a question on your silicone process, right? Yeah. You made a mention that no one else is doing that. Have you patented that? I'm or just that intellectual activity? Thing. Because really, if that's something that you've been able to develop or create, maybe there's even a greater business model on being able to license a patent to other pro producers yeah. and helping create more revenue stream as you get your brand going. I would love to eventually consider that. Um, at this point, I need other producers of kombucha to buy into the idea first before I invest in the expense of a patent. Because if I do a patent right now and no one's even like, no, this is too crazy for us, then it's a waste of like $20,000. Scott? All right, I have lots, lots of stuff here. Thank you. Uh, so first, your goal, are you guys gonna distribute? And if so, can you keg? Uh, if you can keg, then that could solve some of your glass needs uh, by kegging and then sending up restaurants and bars in the area. Uh, QC issues, I know that comes up a lot in brewing. Uh, you might reach out to some of the bigger local breweries. A lot of times they will, uh, their labs sit uh, idle a reasonable amount and you can get some quality control done inside a brewery's lab. I know Boulevard does that in Kansas City for all the other local breweries and things. So it could be crossover there. Uh, another resource to get the word out more, uh, believe it or not, in Arkansas, the number one brewing podcast in the entire world is recorded. Uh, Basic Brewing Radio, James Spencer is the guy that runs that. He would come here and drink kombucha with you on the <coughs> podcast. And would, the exposure to the community would be huge. They've had three or four uh, kombucha uh, makers on, and the idea that you have something unique and interesting in your process is exactly what they look for. And so you get lots of feedback and buy-in from that community for him. And it's cool because it's local. That's so a weird awesome, thing. Yeah. yeah, so I would look there as well. But if, I'd like to learn more about distribution plans, like what you guys are thinking. And if you want to go yeah. with a co-packer, like to get into retail, what, what all that looks like. Yeah, I didn't touch on that. Um, I'm not interested in retail. Uh, this concept of having community locally brewed kombucha appeals more to me. So like building out this shop concept and uh, we are going to sell direct to consumer initially because regulations are very different when you're selling direct to consumer versus distributing wholesale to even bars and restaurants. Um, so we do keg. From a bottle perspective though, just the way that people consume kombucha, they'll like buy a 16 ounce bottle of it or even a 12 ounce bottle want to drink the whole thing at a time. A few sips here, a few sips there. People want it in a bottle so that they can like spread it out 
I'm not a growler. Yeah, so like we're thinking about growlers right now, 16 ounces and 20 ounce growlers. And <laughs> so eventually like bigger ones if people want it, but what we see with larger ones is like it tends to go flat by the time. So you really need to like drink it quickly, similar to beer, or you know, want to share it. Any more questions? So I love your patent idea, but first of all, I got to compliment you. You have perfect attendance at one million cups. Ideas on tap. I did not do the virtual one million cups. Oh well, shame <laughs> on you. It's not, it's not perfect. Perfect. But but you, you talk about an experience. So once you know more about the process, it's like it's more appealing. So in in your location, if you've thought about showing how this operates. It's kind of like going to Silver Dollar City and watching the guys blow the glass. Yeah. You're more inclined to buy it. So there's like that education part that can build, help build your community. But on the patent thing, you're on to something. Like I heard a wave in here where like everybody loved that idea. So if you have others that are doing what you're doing, I highly encourage you to have a non-disclosure, non-compete. Yes. Make them sign that mm -hmm. and then keep that document and, and let the, be open to whatever could happen with that. Can and I'm proud of you. You guys are doing SCORE great. Or SBDC like help me with templates for something like that? Yes. Or, yes. yes. Okay. I can help you with that. Thank you. So just uh, uh, correct me if I was wrong. Are you looking for a lab for alcohol testing as well? Yes. So I may have a connection for that. My wife, she's a drug chemist, but a toxicology lab would be perfect. Yes. And um, I may be able to obtain a private lab. I can't, they probably can't do it at the state level or an external, but a private lab that can test that just for the health inspection. I know the health inspection is my neighbor, so. They'll be tough on you, but I can probably provide a lab that you can you can do. That's gonna be awesome. I also um have met with the chemistry department here at MSSU um on using their lab and they're like it might be kind of expensive for you, it's like hundred dollars an hour. So yeah. Awesome, Toby. So <clears throat> Jasper Products has a beverage lab. They have a whole team. All they do is quality control for beverages uh, on the alt milk side of things. But I think it would be interesting to at least connect with them and see what they can offer up. And then um, there's a gentleman that runs a, a lab for KCU. It's actually on Southern's campus, but it's not Missouri Southern. Okay. Um, so, and then um, and I would really recommend doing a provisional patent application. Uh, about three hundred dollars. It's like a placeholder, and that, but it'll buy you a year. And then once you flush that out, you need to file your your real patent application. Um, yeah. And I have some ideas on that. I'll talk to you later about the silicone uh, fabrication. Uh, they're not local connections, um, uh, but if you're going to mass produce and sell um, the, those, that that could actually be your business. And then the the kombucha lounge is kind of for fun. Yeah, <laughs> right now I, I'm able to do like five gallon batches in it by taking a, a large food grade silicone mat and like strapping it around a wire mesh or like a wire rack. And so like looking at that at a bigger scale, I got some liquid silicone rubber that I'm looking at like coating fabric. So it's a little bit more sturdy and then putting it in like a little crate or different sizes of crates. So it's been interesting. Awesome, thank you, mate. Derek, going back to patenting, uh, Derek Martin out of uh, Carthage is my trademark and patent attorney. Uh, he's really good. He might It might be worth just setting up a consultation with him just so that you're working in the direction of patenting and protecting yourself in the meantime until you, until you get to that point. Does he require a retainer just for a consultation? I've never paid a retainer, okay. so no, I don't think so. <laughs> and he was very, very affordable. Okay. He works out of his house. Nice. Out of the middle of nowhere. Okay, I'll come back to you and get his contact. Any more questions? All right. Oh, okay. One more. Just a brace. So mentioning the probiotic side of kombucha, so I have a buddy that brews and 
Washington, as far as that goes. And um, when you go to retail wise, some of the added probiotics, you know, drink kombucha, and then you know, 30 minutes later, it's like praying to the porcelain gods. So, <laughs> like, it. I mean, it's, it's 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 a real thing, you know. So people that have experienced that, you know, how do you kind of overcome that process and what you guys do for for you guys brewing? Because that, I mean. I've had people say, I'll never drink that again because it hurt more than it helped. <laughs> Just need to try it, honestly. And there's a big difference between buying it in a store where it was brewed halfway across the country and bottled and put onto refrigerated trucks and then shipped everywhere and then moved place to place. And you know, sometimes it warms up and cools again and warms up and cools it. Like drinking it fresh so different. It's a completely different experience. So all I can say is just try it. And you have samples too, right? Yeah, back here, taste it if you haven't tasted it. Um, just we we have a variety of stuff. So kombucha is traditionally very sour and tart. We have sour ones for people who love sour. We have less sour ones. We have ones that are flavored with hops and beer for people who, who want a beer replacement that's non-alcoholic. And then the water keeper is seltzer, it's fresh, it's refreshing, it's just really good. Awesome, let's give her a hand this morning. Good job. So a couple of things, she has samples. And so if you would like to try the kombucha, if you didn't get a chance to do that this morning, or if you only tried one flavor, she offered me three flavors this morning, I tried all three, and I did like the water keeper. It tasted a lot like sweet Moscato. So if you like Moscato wine, she has a flavor that tastes very similar to that. So definitely try some samples. And those of you that had some resources, make sure you connect with him today to provide those resources. As well as I know some of you had some resources for Megan and Pineapple Bliss this morning. Make sure you connect with her as well. So I want to encourage Megan and Kim to stick around so you can connect with our community today. Stick around for more coffee and connections. We sell plenty of coffee to be had. And next week we have another great presenter. So come back next week and hear more from another local entrepreneur. And don't forget that we've got some giveaways. And so first of all, Kim, we have a One Baby Cups tumbler mug for you as a presenter this morning. Thank you. There you go. And we have one for you, Megan, as well. So this is something while you're making some lists, you can get caffeinated as well. You're very welcome. And I'm gonna stick the other one because we've only got two presenters. So here's what we're gonna do. Next week, we need presenters, okay? We need more presenters. We have one next week. If you would like to be a presenter, we've got room for one more if you were to apply today. Okay, so in the back, Aaron and Alyssa are back there. Aaron goes, oh, no, okay, oh, come over here to see Gina at the laptop. So she is ready to get you signed up today if you would like to present as soon as next week. Some of you I know have that skill craft. Please take an opportunity for that. If not next week, we are looking for presenters ongoing, okay? So if you know an entrepreneur, I know many of you are connected and working with entrepreneurs, coaching them, mentoring them, please get them to sign up. If they struggle, please see one of the, our organizers. I'd be happy, any of our organizers would be happy to sit down with them for a cup of coffee, ease the pain. It's not easy sometimes getting up in front of 30 to 35 people and saying, this is who I am, this is what I do, and these are my challenges. That's very transparent talk. So please encourage them. We would love to have them, okay? With that said, we're happy to have you here this morning. Let's get coffee and let's keep connecting. Yeah. <laughs> 